Great, good Choice. evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting. If you could please stand and join me in pledge to the flag. To the flag of the United States, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this meeting is being audio and video recorded and will be shown on local access cable. First on the agenda is a public hearing for um, Town Line General Store. Um, is the applicant here? Yeah. Okay, um, so I will first read the um, posting pursuant to Chapter 138 of Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 15th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in the Eldon F. Marriott Board of Selectmen Meeting Room, Town Hall, 65 North Main Street, West Bridgewater. On the application to transfer on the application for the transfer of a beer and wine off-premise liquor license from Cover Incorporated, doing business as Town Line General Store, 450 East Center Street, West Bridgewater, to TJS Convenience Store, doing business as Town Line General Store, 450 East Center Street. Interested parties are invited to be present and to be heard. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we have an application. It looks like um, this applicant is purchasing the store um, with the liquor license. Um, there is a um, report in here from our liquor license agent, Chris Warner, um, with a favorable recommendation. Lorna, do you have everything you need? Okay, are there any questions for the applicant? No, I don't have any. I don't have any questions. Okay, would the applicant like to say anything? So, no. I'm Attorney Ian Hedges here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is Mr. Patel right here. So I think you have his, his copy of his tip certification. Um, there won't be any changes to the operation of the store itself. So everything will largely remain the same. There you go. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. So if anyone from the public would like to speak, now is their opportunity. Oh, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And is there a recommendation to approve the transfer license? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You guys are all set. Thank you. Thank Best you. of luck. All right. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys. I'll be in touch. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Um, <laughs> Up next, we have a transfer of Common Vic license um, for Two Gals Grill. Um, I believe the applicants are in the back. Um, I don't believe there are any significant changes to the operation. It looks like the hours might be increasing from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Did you say the hours are changing? What are the hours Oops. currently? What did you know? 7 to 2. Oh, okay. So you're adding dinner. Not quite yet. But okay. Eventually we will be, yes. Oh, great. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Any questions? I nope. don't have any questions. Would you guys like to say anything? Oh. No, we've already been there for five weeks. Uh, really great town. Um, guys have been very, very friendly people. At first of all, I'm not from here. I'm from New Hampshire. So this was a really big jump for me coming from New Hampshire. Um, Great place. I mean, we look forward to being there for at least 10 years. Contrary to everything you hear about Massachusetts, we're not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but my heart will always be in New Hampshire. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Okay. Um, and Lorna, do you have everything you need? Yes, I do. Um, is there a motion to approve the Common Vic license? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Congrats. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. We have an application for a transient vendor license and one day Sunday entertainment license for Bur Berwick Boys Foundation Car Show on September 26th. Um, we do typically um, waive the fee for these. Um, I, does anyone have any comments or anything? Are they a nonprofit? Yes. yes. Okay. Do we know if they're up to date on their filings? Well, we wouldn't know that. Never mind. I'll check. Okay, so is there a motion to approve? So uh, moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And they have um, another transient vendor license application for holiday trees and resales from November 27th to December 22nd. Is there a motion to approve those and waive the fees for those as well? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay. Um, next, we have a um, joint vote with the school committee um, to appoint a Southeastern Regional Vocational School Committee member. Um, is Sue here? I don't see her. I do know, I expect her to be here, but I haven't seen her. I've not talked to her today. Okay. We are ahead of schedule. Um, We're moving along pretty fast. Not to tease you about it or anything. Um, okay, yeah. we can skip to the second item with the school committee, um, which is the discussion on the budget meetings. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys have input. I'd primarily defer to the finance committee and school committee on what they'd like to do. We were hoping to have probably about four meetings to go through the school department budget in some detail. We'd like to call a finance committee meeting and go through which particular lines within the budget we'd like a little bit more information on so that we can fully prepare and understand the budget before we get into budgeting season. And we'd like to do this as a joint meeting with the school committee, the finance committee, and yourselves if you'd like to join as well so that everybody has a really good understanding of what goes into that budget. We'll select whatever lines the Finance Committee goes through and, and just ask for some documentation and have that discussion. Any members of the School Committee have a... It sounds, it sounds, sounds fantastic to us. I know that we've had a... Um, uh, in the past, we discussed this, having a uh, person from uh, the Slackman's office uh, or two Finance committee, a couple people, and we have a subcommittee on the school committee uh, uh, for for the budget. So uh, we welcome this. Um, Mr. Bodwell is uh, happy with this, and I think it'll make budget time go a lot smoother. Um, so we're all we're all in favor of that. Well, I think this is great. This is something we've talked about for years on the finance committee. So I'm really happy to see this come together. Mm -hmm. I'd be more than happy to participate. Just let me know. Are you planning these meetings but before your regular meeting, after your regular meeting? Yeah, we I were mean, thinking probably, um, what were we thinking, like two in, in, I forgot what we said for a schedule. We talked about a schedule maybe two in October and maybe the beginning of November um, before the holidays. We want to get it all done, you know, long before Thanksgiving, but spread them out, maybe have maybe four meetings and try to get through it before we get into the budget season so that everybody's, you know, level set and on the same page. So would it be during the evening? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Does that work for, for you folks? Yeah, well, I think it would, so that it wouldn't be a whole committee meeting, it would be uh, up to our two uh, committee members and I don't know, I'm not sure if you have your whole committee there. Um, so we yeah. can work the dates uh, around people's schedules and yep. I don't know if Mr. Gagney would like to be part of it mm -hmm. or not or I would hope that he would but yeah, I think, I we think could so. uh, put some dates out there. Mr. Bodwell just arrived. Um, Hello. Hello. We're talking about putting some dates together to, with the finance committee. And sure. Mrs. Anderson has decided, not decided, has uh, <laughs> I would to like to join it. Would like to be part of it as well. <laughs> sure. Uh, the more, the merrier. No pun intended. But, uh, <laughs> um, but we, we welcome it. So. We're looking, do we have any potential? Uh, we. I don't think we have any okay. potential dates because we have our, our two subcommittee people too. So we'd have to work the dates around everybody's schedule to make sure that it would work. Absolutely. But I think if we could put some initial dates together, maybe Mr. Gagney could send them out, and we could uh, go from there if that works for everybody. So I may have to recuse myself from these meetings. I think I have a conflict of interest in their budget. I know I have a conflict of interest in their budget from a perception point. I think I could, would be fine going through their budgets, but my daughter works at the school. Yeah. I mean, this is more exploratory, Denise, in terms of understanding the budget. We wouldn't be voting on anything. We wouldn't, you know, anything like that. It's more of an understanding looking through the budget, understanding what that each line I, is. That I kind of would thing. like to do it because many times it, when it does come down to crunch time, we're asking you questions on lines that you've probably dissected to the nth degree and understand thoroughly, but we don't. Mm -hmm. So it would be a good learning opportunity. So uh, David, do you have any opinion on that as far as the attending? 
Yes, yeah, so my, no, no, I think you're okay. I think you okay. cannot take a vote specific to a budget line that your daughter is paid out of. So if we identified in, in this, we would have to ask probably Kathy Grant's help on, is that any line that she's paid out of, so if she's paid out of a salary line, that's clear, but maybe there's a stipend line or some other line, you cannot participate in taking, I'm sorry, you cannot vote on those lines. Okay. In reference to just at this point, because there is no policy making, all it is is discussion and understanding, I think you're a-okay on that. Okay, good. David, because these are not, they won't be making policy or making decisions, are they public meetings? Yeah, they w well, that'll really be up to Jan. The way Jan and I talked about it last week, and I guess over the weekend, um, is that really these are finance committee meetings. Mm -hmm. They would identify dates. My recommendation to Jan, because I, in my opinion, but again, it's not my decision, um, you have 32 budget lines. My guess is there are some budget lines that are pretty simple, mm -hmm. right? They're just self-explanatory. Like, I don't think we need to probably have to do a dive, but that's really up to FinCom, not up to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's my opinion. So my recommendation to Jan was to probably hold a FinCom meeting over the next couple of weeks, identify which lines in particular mm -hmm. they thought was important to them, and also come up with some dates that worked. And then we would then send it off to the school committee. And now with the school committee, if you could send one, two, all five, whomever, hopefully Mark, hopefully Kathy, and that way they could come in and they could say, for example, if they pick 16 lines, they pick four meetings, then they do four lines per meeting. And so they'd say, we're gonna only work on these four lines. Please bring the documentation. So I know, for example, one committee member was really specific to the utility lines. So just bring the utility bills, right? So that way you can look at the, at the information that's on there. And that way, when you get there, you already know specifically what lines it is and you would have the appropriate information. That's the way I'm gonna guess it's gonna work. Yeah. And if one member shows up, or two people, or three from the selectmen, however many from the school, it doesn't really matter as long as everybody is there. And again, without the pressure having, having to vote on a budget, um, you know, everybody can just have a conversation at that point. I guess my only request would be is that we give um, uh, Mrs. Grant enough lead time, because there's gonna be a lot of information that's gonna be asked for, I'm sure. And I think breaking it up in a couple of different time frames. Precious as well. So as long as we can keep it, uh, you know, maybe, you know, if we have to add a couple of meetings, that might be fine too. Okay. I'm not sure if uh, Robin, David, or Donna have any have anything to add but um, as long as we could uh, do that it, you know other people's time is, is you know need to be taken in, into consideration as well yeah no that's reasonable, that's reasonable. Okay. so I think um, you know we'll try to shoot for a meeting in the next week or two of the finance committee we'll line up which line items we'd like to look at what our expectation is in terms of documentation we can send that to you mm -hmm. obviously take some feedback if it seems reasonable and not reasonable and some dates to do it if that works for you folks that sounds that sounds good to me yep. and i i think if, you know they can be public meetings i, I don't have a problem with that I, I feel like the more the town understands the budget the better as well so anybody who wants to participate i think is, is fine with me how, how other people I, we have other members of the finance committee any comments any suggestions anything that you guys have concerns about with this approach no, I, I would think the casual meetings that we have probably won't last all that long. You know, if we're only doing, say, four line items, I wouldn't think we'll be tied up very long. So. I mean, Sounds we can go through and see how yeah. many lines you want. I mean, that's an example. We may have five, we may have ten, yeah. and, you know, whatever right. it is. Yeah. Right. Whatever, you know, Mrs. Grant can dig up and get, you know, the most information at the uh, proper times would be, you know, obviously helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but to, to answer the chairman's question, it would be a public meeting of the finance committee because my understanding is most of the committee is going to want to be there, so it would yeah. be a public meeting. Yeah. And then I think that this process um, um, answers your concern that it, Kathy would have plenty of lead time mm -hmm. because, again, I'm making updates, but if in a week and a half FinCom has a meeting and they say we're going to have two in October, two in November, the first meeting's two weeks away, the last meeting six weeks away. Mm -hmm. That should give everybody ample time. Okay. 
Okay, sounds like everyone's on the same page. So David will schedule those, yep. um, and he'll send the um, dates out to everyone. Um, so going back to the um, Southeastern appointment, um, Sue just joined us. So two weeks ago, Colleen Maloney resigned. Um, Sue Sullivan has submitted an application. Um, I think that Sue is well suited for this. Um, her application is on the screen. Um, having served, what, 12 years or so on the um, Westbridge Water School Committee. Um, this is a joint vote between the two boards. Um, does anyone have any comments or questions, or would you like to say anything, Sue? One thing I would ask, because it's a joint meeting and they are going to be in deliberation after vote, the chairman of the school committee has to formally open his meeting of the school committee. That way they're formally in session and then we would do whatever business we're going to do and at the conclusion of that you would then um, adjourn your meeting and then we would go back to having the traditional selectman meeting. Okay. Just so you I'd like to formally open uh, actually uh, September 15th uh, the Board of Selectmen room uh, Westbridge Water Massachusetts formally open the school committee meeting portion um, to uh, vote on the Southeastern Regional School Committee appointee. Uh, do we have uh, Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Sue, would you like to say anything? Mm -hmm. I just I appreciate the opportunity and I will um, speak with Colleen Maloney so I can get brought up to speed and hopefully I'll continue to represent West Bridgewater the way Colleen has. So thank you. Any comments or questions? No. Thank you for volunteering. Mm -hmm. Is Thank there you. a motion to appoint Sue Sullivan to the Southeastern Regional School Committee? So moved. Second. All in favor, and this will be everyone, I believe, right? Aye. <coughs> Aye. 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 Okay. We weren't supposed to do it all at the same time on cue, were we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of making it look that way. That's quite all right. And because I just have to send us the vote over, if Mr. Chairman, if you could just verify either one that there was no nays or that it was a non um, unanimous, so that way I can okay. capture that vote. Were there any opposed? No opposed, but four members of the school committee, four out of the five members are here. Okay. Thank All you. right. Um, so do you guys want to close your meeting, I guess? Uh, the, uh, like to close the school committee meeting at the Board of Selectmen room on September 15th at 648. Do mm -hmm. you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Sue. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, is there a vote to approve the meeting minutes of May 14th and June 16th? Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And except for review of the meeting minutes of July 7th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we have a re-precincting plan. Um, David, do you want to explain this? Sure. Um, it would be easy. I'm going to just, excuse me, I'm going to move to here. Um, right there. So in 2010, uh, every 10 years as per our U.S. Constitution, we have to have a federal census. Uh, West Bridgewater has two precincts. That is based on the fact that state law is you cannot have a precinct with more than 4,000 people in any one precinct. Uh, we had a population of 6,910 officially in 2010. Uh, and we cannot, we cannot exceed 4,000 in any one, and we have to be as close to each other as possible so there is parity in the two of them. So in 2010, this is what our two precincts look like, and drum roll, this is what the new ones will look like. Wow, pretty cool, huh? Um, <laughs> so um, our population has jumped from 6,900 to 7,700, although that only looks like 800 people in 10 years. That's actually a 12% increase. There are other municipalities around us that have actually lost population. We are still under 8,000, so simple math means that we will still only have two precincts because we must be below four. And you can see on the right-hand side that what we would do is we would have in precinct one, 3,800, precinct two, 3,900. So there's about a 1% difference between the two, but that was the closest that we can get, making sure that we stayed within territorial borders namely either a river, railroad, roads. Um, so Annie, as town clerk, did an excellent job on this. Uh, she put all the information together, met with me and Linda uh, as HR director and the assistant town administrator. Uh, we've also already sent this off to the state. The assessors and the GIS person helped with us with this as well. We sent it off to the state and this is the preliminary draft that the state has approved. So 
At this point, we believe that this is the way the precincts should be drawn. Quite frankly, this is pretty simple for West Bridgewater this year because we still only have two precincts and a couple of hundred people in the Matfield Street area you can see will now be part of Precinct 1. They used to be part of Precinct 2. But our polling location is still only one location, which is Spring Street School. So there's not a big difference, right? You get there, you go to line one, or you go to this line. Um, in other municipalities where there's multiple polling or there's a lot more precincts, it becomes more complicated. I will forewarn you, for all of us that intend to be here in 10 years, that once we go over 8,000, we will probably have three precincts, and that might become a much more difficult situation to figure out. But for today, pretty simple. So if you have any questions, I can answer them. Uh, if not, then the vote would be that you would accept the re-precincting as provided by the town clerk. I think we have the exact language. Um, and the language is important because this is what goes to the state. So Anthony does have a copy of the language. I don't. Okay. All right. I'd like to move to accept the 2020 re-precincting plan for the town of West Bridgewater as presented by uh, the town administrator. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. I said town administrator. You did. It should be town clerk. Do I have to say it differently? Uh, just make a motion to amend the motion for it should be town clerk. I apologize. I'd like to amend the motion to refer to the town clerk instead of the town administrator. So second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, two weeks ago, we took a look at the um, conversation time policy, and I believe that everyone received the policy along with the spreadsheet. Um, two sentences were added towards the end. Um, I personally think that those set a negative tone in the policy and are kind of unnecessary. Um, I, I'd prefer to see it revert back to the original um, memo. So I know some wording might give a negative connotation, but at the same time, I think if it's clear what the penalty is if you don't submit the comp time sheets, then there's no question in anyone's mind as to their responsibility and their role in it. At the same time, it's going to be up to the Human uh, Resource Department to handle this. And if they're comfortable with that language, then I'm comfortable with it. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, and I think they will be. I don't think there's any doubt they'll be consistent with administering it. So I believe that Linda added that language because you had brought it up last mm -hmm. week. I, if I'm, am I mistaken, David, that Linda would prefer not to have that in there? She would prefer not to have line two. She's agnostic was, about the first line. Because that's what I was going to say, the same thing. The first line is fine. I can see your negative tone where it says failure to comply. That mm -hmm. just seems negative. The human resource director should be able to follow whatever disciplinary action is necessary. So just like you were about to say, um, I agree with that. My comment is actually more about the quarterly reporting. And I realize it's going to add uh, a little more administration. But um, being in the profession where we keep track of our time by the quarter hour, we're keeping track of our time all day long. There is no way I could tell you what I did two weeks ago and how much time I spent. So when it only has to be turned in quarterly, I, I, I see a lot of estimates going on. And I, it's only because of where I'm coming from. So I think that's a good idea to have it monthly and mainly for all of the points you made, but also you will quickly know if it's not being turned in. So the administration of uh, dressing when you don't receive them will happen much sooner than quarterly. So does that mean you're suggesting as part of the policy that if you have zero comp time, you still have to turn it in? You should. I mean, that's typically what you do in accounting, negative yeah, reporting. That's what we do. Right. Right. So I would say that would be that would be very helpful to Linda as well. That way she knows she's received it. It's a zero. Uh, move on from there. So I'm okay with removing the failure to comply, and I'm also okay with it being monthly. 
So if you're all comfortable with this, then we says all second sentence, all compensatory time generally must taken by the human uh, will be on the first of every month and must be available upon request. And then the second line in red, we would delete and just remain enforced by the human resources director. Sounds good to me. David, how many employees are we talking about that are cop time eligible? A handful, okay. a couple of department heads. Okay, so that's not that much more administratively. No, I mean, you know, we have some department heads that don't necessarily get comp time. I use the chiefs, for example, because they don't have structured days. Because, again, as I always jokingly say, fires don't happen 8 to 4, right? So, um, so they don't get comp time, but that's only because they don't work a traditional schedule. So it's only a handful of department heads. And, again, I think common sense just always has to dictate on these things. You know, if an employee comes and they have a legitimate purpose that they're here late or need to stay or something we asked, they're, they're, they're entitled to it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's going to change, but I think as long as common sense dictates and we allow that as the litmus test, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we should definitely make sure that it's known that we're not trying to be sticklers about this. We just want to have a policy that's fair that everyone follows. How do we define comp time? <laughs> So, so that's a little bit of a thornier subject. We have not purposely put the definition of comp time into this because right now what I want to do is be able to track it and again allow common sense to dictate. Um, there are some people that believe that if you work a 35 hour work week, which is what the official hours are for the town hall, that if you work 36 hours that you get one hour of comp time. As a salaried employee, I just take, uh, I take exception to that. I've been here for eight years. I do get comp time for specific reasons. I've never taken a minute of comp time because I'm here late, <laughs> and I'm here late a lot. My job requires it. It comes with the territory. That's there, why I asked. But there are some people that take the position, they take the, so again, I think we have to allow common sense. If somebody keeps on coming to me and saying, hey, I worked one hour extra this week, I think we have a problem. Right? Mm -hmm. If somebody comes to me and they say, hey, I, I worked one hour this week and they haven't done it in nine months, well, then, you know, we can, we can have that conversation. Really, what really generates comp time, and I'll give a really good example, is our DPW director is here on Monday nights and Tuesday nights because he handles the concert series. That's clearly comp time, right? It's outside the scope of his normal daily work. It's really not a DPW function. It's just because of what we've always done is have that person take care of those, um, take care of the concerts. And that's comp time. Like, that's pretty cut and dry. So when he turns that in, which is what he does now, we accept it. Um, so, again, I think we just allow common sense to be able to dictate it. And I think by using this tracker policy is that we're going to be able to take a look at the information being provided as to whether or not there's abuse. Assuming there's no abuse, I don't have to then worry about further defining it. If it appears that there's abuse, then we'll have to further define it. So it's, it's really for salary people? It's for salary people because for the most part, there's one or two exceptions, but for the most part, hourly employees are union employees, and those union employees, that compensation time is already defined in the collective bargaining agreements and must be approved in advance by their department head. It's overtime. Correct, so there's a choice between overtime or not. Obviously, salaried people don't get paid overtime. That's why comp time is more prevalent for a salaried employee than an hourly employee. But we have tight budgets, so we can't, except for some exceptions, police department, DPW, we really don't have overtime lines for everybody else. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the policy um, adjusting for monthly and taking out that second red line. So moved. <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, except for resignation, um, John Delano, Open Space and Recreation Committee. Is there a motion to accept John's resignation? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we send a letter of thanks or is that automatic? Yeah, they do it automatic. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, we have a few appointments, um, volunteers for um, boards and committees. Um, first, we have Reverend Ashton, um, who submitted an application for the Conservation Commission. Would you like to say anything, or? Yes, if I had known you were going to put my thing up there, I would have used a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Your handwriting. 
everything's fine. I can read it. We have definitely seen worse. Yeah. <laughs> I am grateful to be able to um, even volunteer to serve on a committee. I, coming from a, a big city in Houston, Texas, there's no town government, and we had no opportunities to serve. I really appreciate being in a town where we can still do that. And so um, I like to volunteer. Um, I particularly like the conservation committee because I live on the, on the river. And um, I'm very concerned with um, that being preserved. Also, right near the farmland, and interested in um, doing that, um, working to see what I can do. So that's about it. Great. Thank you. That's fantastic. We're always looking for volunteers, so thank you. And for the um, and for the board's edification, the conservation commission is full. This is for the second alternate position. Okay. Um, there are a couple of members of the Conservation Commission here. If anyone, to any comments there? Tim Hay, Chairman, Conservation Commission, and I fully support this applicant and looking forward to finally having a full slate of members. So, he said this is an alternate. I guess I don't understand how that works. If a um, yes. member is in, um, at the meeting, then they have alternate members. The Zoning Board of Appeals has alternate members as well. Wow. And it's yet like on some committees, we couldn't get enough volunteers. On others, there's alternates. Amazing. Okay, good to know. Well, I think it, what probably is more prevalent with your committees is it, you have appointments with the public coming right. in for Right, it's by state statute that we need to have the ability to have the alternates to have quorums so that we to keep the process moving. Mm -hmm. and for a while, we didn't have any alternates, and when we couldn't get enough people there, Thank you. We've only problem. had to cancel a few, but not mm -hmm. many. But um, having the alternates available is well needed. So that's great. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> um, is there a motion to appoint um, Reverend Ashton to the Conservation Commission? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next, we have Ashley Anderson, who submitted an application for the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Um, are you Ashley? Yes. Would you like to say anything? Um, I'm just be excited to showcase I'm a West Bridge Order, bring the community together. I volunteered previously just helping out with the cleanup of Holmes Hill, um, and I helped with the river walk planning for 2020, although that did not happen due to COVID. Um, and so I'm just excited to get more involved in West Bridge Water. Great. Thank you for volunteering. And, and let it be known, it's typed. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> She's showing you up there, huh? <laughs> um, is there a motion Ashley. to appoint um, Ashley Anderson to the Open Space and Recreation Committee? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you. And an appointment of um, Hugh Hurley as the plan Planning Board Rep to the Community Preservation Committee. Is there a motion to approve Hugh? So moved. So moved. All in second. favor? Oh, second. <laughs> Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Mo McCarthy. Um, as the Conservation Commission rep to the Community Preservation Commission. Mo, well, would you like to say anything? Uh, not really. <laughs> Perfect. We one <laughs> uh, but we need someone from conservation. It makes perfect sense, and I'm, I'm happy to serve. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve Mo? Her so point? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. How many committees are you on now, Mo? Three? I can't believe we just had four. That's it? <laughs> but you know, the, really, FinCom is fairly condensed. Mm -hmm. Conservation is year-round, but that, that's not too bad in this business occasionally, so mm -hmm. it's really not too cumbersome. Well, we're really grateful for that. I mean, that's, that's a lot of time out of your life to dedicate to the town and volunteering. Yeah. Three committees is when busy. When you retired, you have a little extra time. You do? I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, seriously, thank you very Thanks, much. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe there's four people appointed when there's years we go on and on without. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's good. The check is outside the door. No. <laughs> no, but I think, I think the, uh, Lorna has been doing a good job posting online when we have vacancies. So 
John Delano does a lot of yeah. you know footwork, and Cheryl reached out to them and stuff. I can't take credit for these ones. No, but <laughs> I, I know that there has been talk of trying to get more volunteers. So this is awesome. Whatever it is, seems to have worked. And if you don't mind, since you people are doing this to broadcast it, I'll put a shameless plug in that the Agricultural Commission has got an open seat, and we are in desperate need of another member. So if anybody sees this and wants to uh, sign on, the Ag Commission could definitely use another member. But thank you for posting them, because it definitely works. It, it works. Do you, how old do you have to be to be on a committee? Do you, 18? Is there any statute on that? Well, oh, in this case, we'll no say three. Well, three. Be helpful. But I've got three little volunteers. Okay. Is, yeah. there, is there a statute, <laughs> statutory age? I don't believe so, but I am sure that you have to be at least a voting age, so I would say Okay. 18. But we're still short volunteers on lots of committees, right? Or are we? Yeah, decent yeah. amount. All right. Public comment period. Anyone have anything for public comment? Nope. nope. All right. David has a brief town administrator's report. I do. Um, so, uh, very good news. Uh, Scotland Street heavy commercial vehicle exclusion request uh, has gone to the local District 5, which is based out of Taunton. Um, they have reviewed it, and they have submitted it to the state Indirectly, what that means is is that they must have approved it on their end because they wouldn't forward it to the state if that did not occur. Uh, I will tell you, based on previous history with River Street, there was about three weeks gap between when it went from the district to the state. So hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll receive some good news from the state. And obviously, I'll bring it back to the board at that point. Um, and then we'll implement. Um, nice, next is, is that um, kudos to DPW Director Chris Iantelli. Um, I asked him last year if we could apply for a grant. He did an excellent job. We applied for a grant through the Municipal Climate Resilience Grant Program. In essence, this is money that is made available um, through the Baker Administration to make sure that we are prepared in, um, in case there is any climate-related vulnerabilities. It's a two-tier process. And so we have applied for the initial grant. We have been received, we have received $22,000. And with that, what we have to do is we have to do two things. One is, is that we will hire an engineer. That engineer will identify our most vulnerable areas in town and put together a report. And the second thing is that they will have to, they're required by law to put together a hazard mitigation plan as well. Uh, that hazard mitigation plan will then be approved by this board it will be sent back off to the state and to OCPC, who actually administers it. Um, and then once we put that report together, send it back to the state, they, they approve the report, we will then apply for an action grant. And that action grant will then provide us the funds necessary to implement what those areas that we've identified that are, are in need. So again, all good things. Um, the library, this Saturday, is having its 30th anniversary celebration. And so there is an invite to the selectmen um, and to all town employees. So again, you can see it's this Saturday at 2 p.m. Unfortunately, I will be out of town. There are three things this Saturday I wish I could all be at in West Bridgewater. I can't be at any of them. But again, um, the, board is, the board is formally invited. Um, next is, it's just an FYI to let everybody know, if you had, don't know, that there is paving going on in Route 106, although it's hard not to know, right? Um, but again, they're doing a nice job. It has to be done. Uh, we're using Chapter 90 funds. Some people have questioned why we don't do it at night. Um, I will tell you that historically we have tried, although it's been more expensive, but many of the vendors now choose not to do it at night because it's just not as safe. Uh, we go out to bid. You recall that we have Sursage that is part of our procurement. So we really do get a really good price on paving, um, and but one of the one of the uh, the issues they don't pave at night anymore. So, um, so with that said, it will be done by the early part of next week, as long as we don't get too much rain. Uh, next on my FYI is just really I want to say thank you to a whole bunch of people. We had a 9/11 Memorial Day event. I thought this past Saturday, I thought it was excellent. Uh, the DPW department did an excellent job of making sure that the, t uh, that the place looked, looked really, really good. And the police and fire chiefs, they did a really nice job. It was very well staffed, very well attended. 
uh, and they put, they're the ones that put the whole celebration together, and Pastor Smith did an excellent job as the MC that day. And the other is, is the Park Day event. We had that this past Sunday. Uh, we easily had five to 600 people there. The Lions Association in particular, Jerry Lawrence, um, they just really do a nice job. I think it's something that most residents look forward to every single year. Um, I have a lot of fun at it. I know other people that go have a lot of fun at it. And the nice thing is a lot of our local vendors make money at it as well. And it gives them an opportunity to be able to showcase their wares. So that part is all good. And the last item um, that just came in yesterday, just as another FYI, is that the water department did do flushing on their hydrants yesterday. It did affect the town um, up on the, on the Crescent Street in uh, Stony Brook area. Um, so if you do have any water discoloration at all, it's a result of the hydrant flushing, but please call the water department, 894-1271, if there was any issues or problems. Okay. And that is my report. Thank you, David. I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session, not to return to open session, to discuss strategy re with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the clerical union, since in my opinion as chair, strategizing in open session would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Um, all in favor and a roll call vote. Aye. Uh, Anderson, yes. Rays, yes. And Kinahan, yes. We are now in executive session.